Good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome to week four. Um, we're going to be taking a look at this week's assignments, but I also wanted to give you a quick update. If you have not seen it already, you will have your um, grades returned on the interest inventories, and I gave you some audio feedback. Make sure you review that along with the rubric scores. Um, some people struggled with some of the APA stuff, which I get, it's not, it doesn't come naturally to anybody. Um, but I gave you some feedback on that as well as of course, content and things. Most everybody, you know, it was a, it's a fairly short 25 point uh, assignment. So most everybody, you know, had the basics there. A couple of you and probably more than a couple um, may have missed part of the requirements um, so if you, if you make sure that each time we have a writing assignment, you not only really review the assignment sheet, but you also view these lovely videos, I'll, I go over the assignment. So I think, you know, we'll, we'll get better and better at that as time goes on. Um, anyway, neither here nor there. Really important thing though, and I put it right there in the feedback, but I kept getting these weird messages popping up last night. And as soon as those go away, I can't see them anymore. Um, don't leave me any comments or questions in the assignment. So where it gives you my feedback, don't hit comment, don't don't do anything in there <laughs> once once the grade has been entered because it doesn't, it gives me like a quick flash on the computer, but it doesn't give me a message that I can go back to and see who did it. Um, so unless I go through everybody three or four times, I will not see those comments or questions. So it's very, very important that once a grade is assigned, don't leave any more additional comments on the assignment itself. You need to shoot me a message in inbox. Otherwise I will not see it. I also am going to um, send you guys in this week's um, in this week's announcement um, another copy. I think it's in the course, but I'm going to send you another copy of the Word document that you should be seeing right now. This is the. Lake Sumter Libraries template. Now you can access this anytime you want um, on the Citation Center page, but uh, sometimes it's helpful to have the actual computer file and then you can save it on your computer. But this is the absolute 100% up-to-date current APA style. Several of you included um, a header, like a, the running head that APA used to require along with the page number. We don't do that anymore. And thank goodness, because that was tricky. Um, but then also the old version required an abstract, no longer required. So this, this is where you should go for your um, template to use. The other thing that I really like about this, and our library is awesome, but they spend a lot of time on these. This whole paper, is about how to do the stuff that you need to do. So how to use tables, how to use figures. We're gonna be using a lot of visuals. Some of you had visuals in this one. They weren't required, which is absolutely fine, but you gave it a shot. I love that. Um, but this is something, this whole section is something that is gonna happen every time you create a visual. Um, and so this is a setup that you can that you can mimic. You also have the ability to add visuals and figures and things like that um, using word zone tools. So I'm gonna just put something in here. I'm gonna put a photo in here um, and show you where to go to get that information. Um, let's do a picture. I'm just gonna do a picture from file. I'm just going to pick the first uh, image because I don't really need to dig for anything. So if you've inserted a picture, um, we probably don't want that indented. If you've inserted a picture, um, 
you can use words tools to create everything that you um that you need and i believe let me double check here it's under it's not under design is it under layout Got everything kind of out of order. Let's see the format pane. No. You can align it. You can move it around. Um, you can use wrap text so that it goes in with your text. Um, as far as position, this will give you the ability to move it around in, in text um, with the text wrap. Um, and you can do all kinds of fancy, um, setting of things. Sometimes a big issue is just the size. I picked a very small, um, file, but if this was one of those photos that was so big, you can, you can size that right here, which is kind of nice. Um, trying to find, is it that one? There is a special place in Word that you can um, and I am having trouble finding it. It's definitely a Monday morning. Anyway, I'll make a separate video for it, but I wanted to give you, I want to give you this document um, as it, as it is in the um, announcement this time, because this has everything you need to do to get started. Uh, but we are going to be using figures and tables and um, all those things. Now, I, I, I typically encourage you to use everything as a figure, any visual that we have as a figure. I feel like it just keeps it um, a little bit more um, coherent. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention to you guys, and we talked about this, but I think a lot of folks just kind of used their own thoughts on how to um, create headings and things. Remember that in order to have everything be solidly um, coded, it is better, even the library just use bold, but it is better to actually use the um, heading styles uh, that's that are in this ribbon, um, the styles pane, and there's heading one. So I know a lot of you just use bold and even the library does that, but um, it's a good idea to get started with that. Probably have a whole separate video about, about um, some of those features as we get into our more technical documents. But I just wanted to give you a brief overview of this one and I will attach that to, um, to this announcement. So where are we this week? Um, let's take a quick look at the syllabus before we dip into the module itself. We're entering week four and what we're doing this week, this is actually kind of, I think this is kind of a fun one, but you are doing your first pass at the letters and memos. So we are writing business letters and memorandum memoranda, uh, as you might use within an inner office communication type system. So these are old school. These are not um, typically things that would have been electronic. These are things that you would print and mail to somebody or that you would distribute in an office, often on paper. Um, the, these days, those would probably, the memos especially would be done electronically and just emailed, but um, setting those up, we're going to get some practice with that. Now, this is also the first of our assignments that we are going to revise later. You're not going to revise it for a new grade on this assignment, but you are going to revise it and include it in what's called your final portfolio. So once you get the feedback back on this, you will use that feedback. Now, I do think it's a good idea to go ahead and revise it now while it's all fresh in your mind. 
um, but you will not submit that final revision until the final portfolio. So um, this is the first of those. Not all of the assignments are like that. So for example, you do not need to revise or resubmit the interest inventory. You do not need to revise or resubmit the experience inventory. And you can tell very quickly, even right here on the um, syllabus, which ones this applies to. So the letters and memos draft, it does. The sample emails and text draft, it does. If the word draft appears in there, then it is going to also be submitted in the final portfolio. And I've included that note each time as well. So down the road, we're going to create a portfolio out of revised versions of the things that we've turned in for those particular assignments. So it's very important. It's always important to get your feedback and make improvements for the next you know, upcoming things. But in this case, how well you apply that feedback is going to be part of that final portfolio grade. So you will, you, you don't want to just resubmit the same thing in the portfolio because that's not going to get you a very high grade on that score. Um, so that's what's going on this week. This is the first one that we're doing and it is business letters and things of that nature. So anyway, let's go into the module, go into student view so we can see what it really looks like. Um, and we are now done with this one. So let's make that small. All right. So business writing and old school communication. Um, you have your learning materials here. Um, there's a reading assignment for that is from chapter four. Chapter four, I, <laughs> the people that put that uh, online textbook together, I love them. But chapter four is like the longest chapter in the history of chapters. Uh, so a lot of our stuff will be within chapter four, but it'll only be certain parts of it. So you do want to read that before you do pretty much anything else. And then I've got some um, other materials for you. There's a web page uh, that talks about the different types of business letters that you might use in your lifetime. Um, and there's a great article uh, from indeed.com on business writing. So make sure you view both of those. Then you have some um, one video what is a business memo? Because this is not a form that we use that much. And then, of course, I have a graphic for you to learn from as well. Once you have done all that, you will go to the letters and memos draft. Now, if I'm not mistaken, let me go back to the module. Yes, that is your only assignment this week. So you will not have a discussion board assignment um, or anything else. So the only thing that you have to concentrate on this week is the letters and memos draft. So let's go over that assignment. Um, using knowledge from the course in your own research, students will assemble a portfolio showcasing their creation of several pieces of business professional communication. Um, you're going to have several things within this same Word document. So you'll have a cover page uh, and then each page will be a new item, either a memo or a business letter. You probably will not have a references page for this assignment, but if you did research to figure out how to do this outside of our normal class materials, feel free to include one, but it's usually not, um, not necessary. So you're going to have these pieces, a memo, an inquiry letter, a response letter, and probably the complaint that went before it. So that one's not um, you writing in a professional way, but you can have the two pieces there and then a claim letter. So really there's only four official pieces, um, but a response letter is usually written in response to a complaint. So you can also include that complaint to make it clear what you're responding to. So let's talk about it. For formatting, it is a single word document. Um, so like I said, you'll have a cover page. You can include a table of contents, but you do not have to. That is totally optional. Each of the pieces in the portfolio should be on separate pages and each letter should not take up, probably not take up more than a single page. Um, you could have a longer letter, uh, if it's necessary for what you're doing. But most of the time, business letters, you try to keep to a single page. So you're going to research and review 
um, using the course materials and of course your own research if you need to, standard memorandum and business letter formats. Now I will tell you one of my biggest pet peeves in recent years is that if you Google business letter format, it's wrong. Like the first one that comes up is not an appropriate business letter. So use the materials that are in our course more so than the internet, but um, Word does have some, some preset templates that you can use for business letters. Most of those are okay, uh, but you want to keep this fairly, fairly simple because you're going to put all of these in the same Word document. Um, all right, so use appropriate font size, email addresses, and use of space. Now, when you're writing business letters, you are going to include your own contact information. Um, you do not have to give me your street address if you don't want to, but you should have an address on it. Um, so you can make something up if you want there. Email address, you can use your student email address. Um, now in the real world, you probably don't want to use your student email. You want to use a, a fairly plain email address like at or yahoo.com or whatever. Um, and you should also use space appropriately. So it should look professional on the page. So here's the pieces, the memo. Think of an idea you would like to see implemented either in your job or at Lake Sumter if you are not currently employed. A memo would not be directed by you to a company or school that you don't have any affiliation with. Memorandums or memos are internal communication. So if you've got a job, use your job. Um, if you don't have a job right now, you can use Lake Sumter um, as your job. Um, but you want it to be appropriate for a memo. Write a routine miscellaneous memo requesting action and persuading your audience that your idea is worthwhile. Address the memo to an appropriate audience within your job or the school. So if I, for example, wanted to um, get better, better lighting in the parking lot at my job, then I would probably figure out who's in charge of maintenance, who's in charge of the, the buildings themselves or the parking lots. And that's who I would write the memo to. Um, but that's not something that I would, if I were not a person working here, then I would write a claim letter, um, a more official communication to that person. So that's the main difference. A memo is considered an internal piece of communication. So then you have three letters. First one is going to be an inquiry letter. Write an unsolicited letter of inquiry to a business you might want to work for or use, uh, asking questions, a charity you might want to work with or donate to, or an educational institution you might want to attend. In your letter, you might request brochures, pamphlets, or other informative literature, or you might ask specific questions. Uh, you do not have to mail this letter, but if it's a real thing and you're and you're using something that is that is realistically something you want to get involved with, then you're you know you're welcome to use this letter. I would wait until after you get the feedback, um, so you can make any changes. The second one, and this is where you might actually have two parts to it. Start by writing a complaint letter to someone or some business. This could be real or imaginary. Once you've written the complaint and address it to your own attention. So pretend like you're the owner or the whatever. You'll write a response as if you were the recipient or an agent of the recipient. Uh, feel free to have fun making the complaint letter not professional, but use standard professionalism in your response letter. So the, the one that's really testing your knowledge of how to write a good, a uh, good, uh, response letter is the response itself. You could actually have a lot of fun with the complaint. Um, but you'll have two pieces there and I would keep them separate again, complaint on the one page and then, um, and then the, the response. And then the last one, and I mentioned this type of letter before, the last one is a claim letter. So 
what a claim means here is that you want them to do something for you. So write a claim letter to an appropriate school official, a local government official, or a local law enforcement official about an issue affecting your school or your community. You should identify the problem, offer your input, and ask for some sort of action on their part. So same thing, you do not have to mail this letter, but if it is for a real problem, you absolutely could. Now, here's a couple of important things about the claim letter. The claim letter needs to be addressed to the right person. So if I want a street, uh, a bad pothole in my street fixed, the mayor is not the appropriate person. Uh, certainly the governor is not the appropriate person and the president of the United States, not the appropriate person. Uh, if I want better lighting in a parking lot at my school, um, the president of the college is not the appropriate person to write that to. So a big part of your assignment with this claim letter is to figure out who you should write it to. Okay. So keep that in mind. That is a part of this. It needs to be an appropriate person, whether it's a school official, government official, or law enforcement official needs to be the right person for that. Um, that's easily researchable. Okay. So keep that in mind. That is a part of your, uh, of your assignment here. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to turn in a word document. Um, so you're going to do just like you've been doing. You should have a cover page, APA cover page, but then the rest of it is just letters. So you don't really need to worry about um, the APA stuff beyond the fact that it will have a cover page and it's all in the same document. Um, and then, of course, if you do use research, you will additionally have a references page. So for sure, it will be cover page, memo, inquiry two things for the response and the um, claim letter. It'll be at least six pages long. All right. All right. Those are your marching orders. Um, if you have any questions, of course, as usual, make sure you reach out to me. Um, if it's a question about the assignments, it's great if you will post that on the Q&A uh, because that way I can answer it once instead of answering several times. Um, and that's about it. I, like I said, I will probably get you some additional resources on the, the how to with the figures and the, t and that sort of stuff, but we don't need them in this week's assignment. In fact, you shouldn't have pictures in this week's assignment. Um, so I may take a little extra time with that, but I will, I will give you some additional resources for those. So in the meantime, I hope everybody has a great week four. And, um, if I don't talk to you in the meantime, I will see you next week. Monday. Take care, everybody.